Which one of you guys started the fire on YouTube uh, with all the trolls? Ooh, what? You didn't Who started? start the fire? <laughs> yeah. yeah it was great... always burning since the world been turning. Mm-hmm. We're going to blame it on Justin. Why? Yeah. Which Good. one? What are you talking about? The CrossFit Good. one's going Oh, I Of course. See. Of, what do you mean? Which one? Of, of course, it's going nuts right now. Yeah, of course. We knew that was going to happen. Yeah, you know what? That's I, where they hang out. Apparently, you know what I, I find. You, you know what's funny to me is, okay, so I guess uh, if I had to identify with a modality of training, it would be bodybuilding. If I had to, like, if I, right. had, if you had to put if you were me forced, right? If you were, if you were to put me in a category of how I train most often or what I what mm. I gravitate towards the most, it would be bodybuilding, which I find it funny that people get insulted and they feel the need to defend CrossFit when we talk about these things. It's like if you were to talk shit about bodybuilding as, oh, it's a terrible way of lifting and like... I That's wouldn't, who I am. Right. I wouldn't feel I, exa- I wouldn't feel the need to like come rescue it and well, be like, well, that is so wrong and you don't know what you're talking me. about, well, Sal. There's one thing to uh, attack. Like, talk about drinking the Kool-Aid. Well, here's the deal. Yeah. Okay. It's, it, you have to get more specific. So you could say bodybuilding training sucks. Okay. But why? Why do you say that? Yeah. And then if someone sits down and lists, well, if you constantly isolate muscles, you create maybe some dysfunction. It's aesthetic focused. So you don't focus so much on mobility and on functional strength and movement. Those are actual good critique. They can be very good. Absolutely, critiques. and say you know we talk about how many people get into the gym because they're insecure about their body, and I could make the case that you know training for aesthetics and you know using the mirror and the way you look as your main motivator is actually a terrible way for most people to train right. and most clients that I train. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't get offended by that. No, no, I, I, I poke you, holes in every uh, method that's out there. Look, look, but only when we talk about that one. Okay, here's this is what it reminds right. me of. Years ago, I don't know, this is probably, I think it was 1994, I want to say. I remember I was watching TV, and this commercial comes on TV, and it's like this cartoon character, and he's like punching the ground, and it's like ultimate fighting championship. Oh, I remember that. Find out which martial art is the toughest, yeah. boxing versus judo, taekwondo versus karate. And it was like this huge debate back in the day. When I was a kid growing up, you'd yeah. watch martial arts movies, and it was always kung fu versus karate or boxing. Yeah. And it was this huge debate. Which style yeah. is the Who's most effective? Who's going to use the five-finger death punch? Yeah. And you know what we ended up figuring out through mixed martial arts? That that all of them have strengths and all of them have weaknesses. Right. And the best- And um, guess who the biggest badasses are? The, the ones that can, that can do all of them. The, the yeah. one that yeah. utilizes the strengths right. and, and nullifies the weaknesses. Okay. Similar with training modalities. Mm-hmm. Does yoga have strengths? That are superior to other forms of modal- modalities. Yes. Does yoga have weaknesses? Yeah. Absolutely. What about bodybuilding? What about powerlifting? What about CrossFit? What about kettlebell training? All these things have things you can learn from and use together to construct the mixed martial art of training, essentially, for the average person. Now, if you want to be special, let me put it this way, uh, using the same martial arts argument. If you want to be the the world champion at Shotokan Karate, does it make any sense to train in wrestling no. or devote any time to wrestling? No. No. The sport of Shotokan karate is specifically karate. Your best bet is to focus all your time on karate. So if you want to be the best CrossFit athlete in the world, right. it makes perfect sense to go focus all your time on CrossFit. Think, same thing with powerlifting, bodybuilding, etc. But if you want to have, uh, you want to train your body, the average person, you want to be fit, well-rounded, your best bet is to take a little bit from each one. And of course, you're going to lean more in one direction than another because of your preferences. Like if you like squatting and deadlifting a lot, you're probably going to do more powerlifting than the other types of lifts uh, or, or modalities. But you can take a little bit from, from each yeah, one Yeah, but we, we've done, what, 1,500 episodes? And we've poked holes in every modality. Every modality. Yeah. We shit on everything. But only when we talk <laughs> about that one do we get this, this – this, the feedback is crazy. Well, it's always a, people that get so butthurt there's a, there's about a bit, talking about CrossFit. There's a bit of a cult. Uh, yeah. A bit? Yeah. A bit Come a, on. Jesus. Know. It's ridiculous. Well, and here's the thing. Because people will say things like, oh, I, you know, I work out at a CrossFit box and the way that they train, they teach technique and they focus a lot on form and it's very appropriate to the person's level and there's lots of individualization of the training. My question yeah. for those people is- functional training. Yeah. Well, well, my question is always this. What makes a form of training CrossFit, right? What are the things that make it CrossFit? Yeah. Please define it. To my best estimation, and I'm pretty good. I know this. I know I, I, I've- understand CrossFit quite well, and I know you guys do too, to my best estimation, 
what makes something CrossFit literally is the sport of CrossFit, training for the sport. Other than that, mm -hmm. what they're utilizing are deadlifts, squats, presses, cleans. They're running. They're doing exercises. And yeah. doing them all right doesn't make it CrossFit. What makes it CrossFit is when you make it the sport of CrossFit. And even if you want to go into the modality of it, uh, they've pulled from every other functional training method that already existed. So it's like this culmination of all these other training, uh, you know, methods out there that, um, you know, does have legitimacy into it. But uh, what makes it CrossFit is the intensity. It's the competition of it. It's the actual sport of it that, uh, you know, differentiates it from everything else. I right. think it's the feeling of superiority that I love to just poke at because that I think they think that sure. many people that take it believe that. And we now, mind you, there's a lot of people that listen to Mind Pump also do CrossFit are in our community or in our forum <laughs> that are not like that that are yeah. like understand the points, but they, and they can say, hey. I like doing it. I love the community. It's I've been very consistent with it. I totally hear all the points that you guys make. I yeah. try and make adjustments into my routines and add mobility days and do things like that. But yeah, I totally get it. But it doesn't mean we're telling people don't do it. It's just when we think I, when I talk on this podcast, m the person I think I'm talking or who I'm trying to communicate to are the people that I trained for 20 years. Yeah. Those people. Yeah, average person wants yeah, to get in shape. Yes, mm -hmm. not the supreme athlete. Who who is who is trying to compete in CrossFit? I mean, by all you should be doing that if that's what you want to do. I'm talking about you know Susie, who's 55, had three kids, tried to lose weight 20 for the last 20 years, yo-yo dieted most of her life. Which, by the way, this is like 70 percent of the clientele that would come through the door of a gym that would hire a personal trainer. That's who I'm talking mm -hmm. to. I'm not talking to you, 20 year old kid who's in great shape, great mobility, and, <laughs> and you know well, don't have weight it, issues. And there was a comment you. in there where one guy's like, "I lost. I think it was I don't remember. It was like 80 pounds doing CrossFit. There, you know, therefore it's amazing. Well, okay, let's 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 just use something else. I lost 80 pounds playing basketball. Yeah. I lost 80 pounds crash dieting, playing soccer. I, I lost 80 pounds doing jujitsu. Does that make it the best form? Maybe, maybe for that person. Look, if you love it and it's working for you, actually, I'm never going to argue against that, right? Yeah. Uh, unless you're getting lots of injuries, unless you're, you know, complaining about problems, I'm not going to argue that. It's it's obviously worked for you. It's obviously brought you more benefit than good. Yeah, but you got to be even careful saying that because the sustainability of it. You as a as a coach that's experienced, you know that. Like right. somebody could have easily right. I don't recommend so, any hardcore sports for weight loss. Yeah, I mean somebody could have easily lost eighty pounds by gr you know grossly reducing their calories and running five miles every single day, right. and just because they liked doing that during that time and that's got them those results. Me as a, a professional would still not recommend that as an ideal way because right. what I know is the sustainability of that long term. It's just not realistic. Most people okay will not run five miles a day and eat thirteen hundred calories forever. And so even if it did work for you and you mm -hmm. do like doing that, that's the problem that I have well, with Well, you that. know what the issue is? And you guys, we see this in uh, in diet culture as well. If somebody does something and it, it gets them to lose weight and change the way they look or the way they yeah. feel. They're a fervorous uh, evangelist at that point. Yes. They're, they're so married to it. So you could talk to, talk to anybody who's lost a lot of weight doing uh, keto or going vegan or paleo or whatever, cabbage juice diet, whatever. And what you'll, what you'll get is a somebody's very religious about what they just did. Well, I mean, you could bring it, instead of diet, bring it back to training modalities. Sure. People get the same way with that. That's why there's a community of power lifters. There's a, commu there's a community of CrossFitters, a cr community of bodybuilders. And so it's no different. I'm ta I talk to them the same way. It's like I mean, that when I was bodybuilding, one of the biggest flaws that I saw in my peers was that's the way they always trained. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, you guys know that if you just moved out of this, you know, super setting, isolation exercise, pumping exercises all the time, you would see huge benefits if you power lifted for a little while. Yeah, like and, you have no idea. And that's actually a great, a great point is that even if you are extreme in one of the sports, there are some things you can learn. It doesn't have to be a ton, but there are some things you can learn that will also benefit you. For example, Bodybuilders that take from powerlifting, uh, they build more muscle as a result of doing that. Some of the best yeah. powerlifters in the world, excuse me, bodybuilders in the world were powerlifters at one point. Ronnie Coleman uh, is, a, is a great example of that. Um, you know, you could do that for most of these modalities. And I think you're doing yourself a huge disservice when you put yourself in this camp and it's us versus them mentality because you're no longer open to growth. You're no longer open to progress or even just seeing what's not working for you. Make no mistake, when you get stuck in a in a mentality, 
you can actually do yourself a, a, a quite a bit of harm. I'll, I'll, I mean, going back to the diet thing, I can't tell you. I would get messages from people, especially when we first started the podcast. I get messages from people who are like, hey, Sal, I've been doing keto for for four months. I feel terrible. I'm very constipated. When is when is my body going to transition? When's it going to start feeling good? Like it's not. It's been four months. It's not working for you. Yeah. But because they're so stuck on this camp that they're ignoring their body signals. You see this with training too. Yeah. Hey, Sal, I lost 40 pounds doing CrossFit, you know, but I had to get, you know, a shoulder injury. You know, I, I feel really run down. You know, I got my testosterone levels checked. It's down. So, you know, when is that going to start to reverse? Well, maybe that's the wrong modality for you right now. Well, maybe- it's, it's, it's literally everything we've learned over the past year or two is, is how tribal everybody is is and, and how much they don't want to hear a counterpoint or, or invite a discussion of, you know, uh, admitting that there may be some flaws, in, you know, in the methodology. They don't want to like examine that and, and think critically about things. Yeah, I know. It yeah. cracks me up though. Yeah, it's hilarious. It always, it always cracks me up. And I yeah. think, I think part of me likes to, of to, course. to trigger it. Yeah. yeah. Of it's course. like, let's start this conversation. Yeah. Because I feel like we, again, we've talked about all the other modalities in this podcast, but nobody brings that up. Everybody's like, oh, these guys talk shit about CrossFit. It's like, bro, <laughs> we talk about every modality yeah, every right. and everybody is and by the way, by the way everyone is just as guilty of gravitating towards one modality and sticking to it i mean that was a lot of the motivation of starting the show was that we wanted to break those barriers yeah, and right. teach the average person that there is something to take from power lifters there is something to take from kettlebells there is something to take yeah, from crossfit it's easier. it's yoga. easier to stay in that one uh, train of thought in, in that that same pattern because you it's your body like it, it likes that i, I want to keep doing what i like to do i don't want to challenge and myself. i get i get it we're the same way too we're just as guilty it's a human condition yes when yeah. i assess the way we all train we all tend to gravitate towards the things we like most but i'm we're all aware of it and yeah. we all know like okay it's been a little while i've been pushing the weight too much i need to get out of here go into my bodybuilder way or i need to go mobility focused right. or hey i'm gonna pull the kettlebells out and get working on some rotational stuff like so yes i mean i'm just as guilty too but i'm i'm also aware enough to be okay that when someone you know, points out one of those modalities as having flaws. I don't get attacked personally. Like it's, you're coming after, (laughs) after me. You're like, all I can say is like, yeah, you're right. That is a flaw in that training modality. Well, I mean, look again to just to hit the other side, uh, for as long as I've been in in fitness professionally, which is over two decades and non-professionally, which is much longer, uh, no strength modality at all was able to get people to squat and deadlift and to use bumper plates. None. Bodybuilding failed at that. Powerlifting failed at that. Weightlifting failed at that. It was CrossFit. It was CrossFit that literally got people to squat and to deadlift and to use platforms. Before that, mm-hmm. you could you would not find a platform. They in, certainly didn't invent it, though. No, you would not <laughs> find it in any gym. And you would not. And, and literally, I would manage these 40,000 square foot facilities. There would be one squat rack and nobody yeah. would use it. And deadlifts, God forbid you saw a deadlift, people would freak out. So... CrossFit single hand. That's why I'm grateful for CrossFit. It single handedly got people to do some of the most effective exercises known to man. Does that mean yeah. I can't critique some of the other shit? Yeah, Absolutely. Now not. evolve and be better. Yeah, that means I can't. <laughs> that's all I'm so, asking. All right, so-